Hello everyone and welcome to Sug Talks, the official podcast of the UK and Ireland SAP user group, a not-for-profit membership organisation designed to help you get the very best out of your SAP investments. Our focus is bringing the whole of the SAP community together so our members can learn, network and collaborate to improve their organisation and make their job easier, providing an independent channel through which to influence SAP. I'm Craig Dale, your host and Chief Executive of the User Group, and together with our special guests, we'll take a deep dive into the topics, challenges and opportunities facing SAP users today. We're here today to continue our discussion on the journey to S4 HANA. And if you've not listened to the first part, I recommend you do before continuing your journey with us into this episode. And I'm delighted once more to be joined by Dawn Ingle, IS Director of Shoesmiths, Trish Griffiths, Head of Finance Systems at the at Nats, and also the co-chair of the user group's S4 HANA Special Interest Group. Oliver Betts, who is the Senior Vice President, Head of Industry and Product Management for SAP S4 HANA at SAP. And Rianta Rana, who is the SAP S4 HANA Movement Lead for SAP in the UK and Ireland. So, welcome to you all again. In the previous episode, we looked at the trends of customers moving to S4 HANA and Dawn kindly shared Shoesmith's learnings in their journey a couple of years ago to S4 HANA. And as with all journeys to the future, there are often barriers and our members cite costs, change management and alignment with the business strategy being their top three. Also, building a compelling business case is often an issue for many customers. So in this area, Oliver, what do you see from SAP's side around the barriers? Yeah, and uh, I think that's that's really a fair statement. I mean, the building the business case is maybe one of the, the biggest challenges. And we a little bit talked about that also in the first episode um, on what measures customers have to take to really to really gain uh, the value. So um, first of all, um, as we as we stated already in the first episode, every every journey, every customer journey is is different because the starting point of every customer is different, and that's also how that's why the value realization, also how to build the business case, is really case by case. Um, the the real, I mean, in general, I would say that generating or capturing the value requires not just to do um, a technical conversion, but to really adopt the new business processes which come with S4 HANA, which leverage the power of, of S4. That's that's where you really can gain the value if you then, uh, for example, drive operational efficiencies, if you can actually move to the, to the live MRP and do that completely different where you gain these savings. And that's exactly how you would have to build up the business case with the help of SAP, with the help of, an, uh, of a partner understand your, your starting point, which I think you're typically aware, um, compare it also to, to the experiences other customers had, and then to build it from there, where is my, where do I want to be? So what is my vision, is my strategy? What's my cloud strategy in the company? How does this fit in? And then build it out. And then it's typically um, the value case realization goes over time. Um, there is it looks like the easier path to start with the technical conversion because that's the that's the quick win that you get, but that requires that you also then commit to do uh, IT and business together. The transformation, the second part, the second stage starts like with another easy wins like adopting the furies, but again changing the process because again I think that's for me the, the most important thing. Only there you can really um, you can really gain the values or find the real values. A simple technical conversion will, will at the end lead to disappointment because it doesn't allow you to, to benefit from, from the capabilities, from the technology and from the best practices which are built into the solution. Thank you. Uh, thank you for those insights, Oliver. And, you know, looking at those, if you like, the, the, the challenges and the barriers and overcoming them, that there's got to be lots of areas and I, I know there are a number of areas where customers can go for help and support. So Ray, where, where can uh, customers go for help and support within SAP? 
Um, so from an SAP uh, UKI perspective, um, we have a couple of options. Um, so firstly, obviously, customers have the alignment with their account executives, and that could always be a, a good first point of call because um, then they will uh, lead them to uh, the right places. We then also now have the um, SAP Espahana movement program set up um, that I'm leading in the UK. So you can come by that channel. And then we also have our pre-sales team um, who th that is another really good um, source and channel. And you know the pre-sales, myself, um, the license teams also work very closely with our user group re representative as well, Mandy Bentley. So um, I would say, you know, there's uh, all of the options that you have available, apart from um, all of the collateral that we have as SAP available, uh, you know, publicly in terms of the movement program. But from an SAP UKI perspective, that would be my uh, suggestion is, um, you know, use pre-sales, Mandy, the movement program, or obviously your AE. Thank you, Ray. And, and Trish, from, from the user group perspective, obviously we have a dedicated S4 HANA special interest group. And how, how can we help customers? Um, I think we probably help with actually partnering other companies and actually not just the business partners. Um, it's actually how other companies are doing it, such as Shoesmiths. So you know, Dawn and I have had a chat about, OK, what would we do to put the business case together and how are those steps going to look? Um, and also we did the same um, with another company. Um, so there are a number of companies out there that are more than willing in the user group environment to maybe be a little bit more open with what they've done in the past and what they're doing as part of their transformation and their journey. Because there isn't that pressure of, oh gosh, I've got a salesman breathing down my neck or oh, if I don't know the answer, I look stupid. Well, no, you don't. Any question you want answered is a question that actually we're there for. And if we can't answer it, we'll find the answer or one of our partners will find the answer. Um, and I think that's the thing to remember. We don't have all the answers to this. And actually, this is the start of a very scary journey for a lot of companies. But we're all in this together. I, I certainly agree with that. And I think, again, you know, there's, it's, it's like that old mantra, isn't it? There are no stupid questions. You need to ask them all and nobody will think badly of you because there's got to be at least one other person in the room who's going to want to ask that question, but maybe don't. Yeah, exactly. And, it's it's in the, the front of their head, and you know whether it's whether it's the right answer or the wrong answer. There isn't there isn't a wrong question, um, and whether it's a certified partner that answers it, or whether it's another customer that says, "Oh, I've experienced that," and there is nothing that beats that experience of having been there and already started that path. Yeah, thank you, and Ray, sorry. You well, I think it's the peer-to-peer -peer comfort feeling that um, there, there's no question that that's the powerhouse behind things. And I take your point completely around the big scary salesman or saleswoman standing by their side and you know afraid to ask for a question because they're going to have other pressures. Um, and I think from the SAP Espohana Movement Program, at least for the UK Ireland, this is why we want to work very closely with the user group because I think it's a safe forum for both sides. You know, so there we, we've got lots of tools, services, methods available, but what's most effective, we can only get that from customers themselves. And, you know, that's what we look forward to in 2021. Thank you. Well, well, sorry, Don. I was just going to say, just as, as a customer, so I, I've been to a few events and, and you know, I, I work with Patricia on one of the S4 ones. And actually the questions asked at the end, there was no stupid questions. They were all good questions. And after the event, actually, I was I was mobbed with people with additional questions. So you know, there, there are always people out there to willing to answer anything. Definitely, and and even in this uh, online world that we're currently living in, you know, there's the ability to ask questions. 
although I can't wait until we're face to face again you can have that discussion with a cup of coffee in your hand in person uh, I think you know that's maybe one of the key things we do lose from from the online uh, environment is, is that element and while, while we're talking about that on obviously the the education the the support through through the user group and SAP what with regards to the S4 HANA SIG, Trish, we got plans for that in, in 2021? Of course, yeah. Um, so we're <laughs> kicking that off with a coffee morning. So a virtual coffee morning in a couple of weeks' time. Oh, excellent. Um, and, and I think from, from that, we will start to actually get some ideas from, from, your, from our team and from the users that join us on that event to see where we are going to sort of apply those special interest groups this year um, whether it's a dedicated technical session or a dedicated business session whether it's more dedicated movement sessions because certainly I know the podcast uh, sorry the web webinars that we did for the movement were very well received um, and we've got maybe some of those planned for this year we've always got some sort of user experience um, we did the, um, the game um, so there was a sort of like, yes, yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and certainly from there, we will be looking at uh, first and foremost how we sort of refresh, like you say, post post pandemic. Even if we're carrying on in a webinar world, we still need to connect with our users to make sure that actually we are providing a quarterly update, if nothing else, as as we promised, and then ultimately, hopefully. As you say, Craig, in person later in this year, maybe maybe in November when we've got Connect, um, our annual event. Um, fingers crossed when all the streams come together, that might be in person again this year. I'm certainly looking forward to that. Just run run out and hug everybody, I think, when uh, when, <laughs> when we're allowed to do that. Uh, and, and just reflecting on that, yes, there's lots of content from, from last year, and that's all available on, on our website. As you said, the, the S4 HANA movement, uh, stuff that we did last year is still there. And, and Ray, the, the, what, what are your plans for, for 2021? Um, so one of the key things that we want to do from um, the movement program in the UK is uh, run a series of move in motions. Um, so we trialed this um, last year and uh, we had the opportunity to run one and it was great because we've got a lot of learnings from that. So already in Q1, we plan to run a few of those. Some of those will be industry specific and some of them will be for general business. So just uh, cross industry. Um, and the idea behind the move in motion is um, almost like a, a step one, an early start, uh, a gentle nudge into the process. There's no pressure that, you know, a customer needs to commit to deploying S for, uh, SAP S4 HANA next year or, you know, buying the licenses this year. It's more around, um, you know, getting the intel across to them. There's, it, it includes a series of roundtables with, uh, um, you know, technical, functional experts, pre-sales experts. And the idea is to keep the groups with a small number of uh, customers, but representation from each customer uh, base, uh, business and IT. Um, to, so that we can have a dialogue with them as well, and you know, get get to really understand uh, what are they looking for. So that that's one of the key things. We also plan to run um, a few um, you know sea level roundtables, and uh, we've uh, started talking to you, Craig, and uh, the colleagues around you know some other sort of like webinars and um, education sessions that you know we could bring uh, to to the, to the groups. Um, with things like change management, which personally I am totally passionate about it because uh, I was a customer at one point and I know that the hardest thing to do when you're implementing uh, uh, you know, a, a new technology is bringing people on board. So, you know, getting things like that out um, as soon as possible. And as we go through the year, we're also planning to run um, a few um, SAP S4 HANA forums. Uh, probably we called it a road show. We're not sure whether it'll be a virtual road show or uh, 
you know, uh, uh, um, uh, live, but hopefully we can do it live. So per on purpose, we've delayed that till quarter three. And we want to run one for the UK and one for the Ireland, uh, Ireland separately, because we feel sometimes that, that the Irish don't get the right level of attention that they deserve. Um, so that's, uh, you know, other things that, um, you know, we will do. So, yeah. That's a couple of things that are planned. There's a few other things, but those are the, the key ones to start to get that engagement and met with customers. Oh, excellent. Thank you. And, you know, I look forward to being able to really share uh, that, that calendar with, with, with our members so that they, they know they've got a whole host of opportunities to learn and also network with, with other users, with SAP experts and experts from partners as well for, from across the, the, the whole community. And one of the things and, you know, one of the issues that we foresee is around the availability of skills uh, you know with a large number of SAP customers looking to make the move to S4 HANA in two to three years time and we touched on that earlier around the extension to the maintenance period gives people more time and customers more planning time and what it will probably mean is that more and more customers in that you know in two to three years time moving to S4 altogether uh, and also we did a skills white paper uh, that, that we have available on our website for our members and that research showed that 63% of organizations are actually concerned about the shortage of, of skills in the future. I know Dawn, you mentioned on your, your journey because you were doing it very early in the piece, two to three years ago, uh, that you know there was challenges there. And do you see challenges around getting the right amount of skilled resources in the business now? And what advice do you have for customers for, for their own journey? Yeah, I, I think it's important to have the right skill sets. And I think it's important, even if you use a partner, to have your own internal resource that can work with, with the partner as well and, and challenge to a certain extent. In the first episode, um, Ray talked about you know, being in control and, and having having that opportunity. And I think that's really important. Um, I don't think anyone should get this done to them. They need to have their own skill sets internally. That doesn't need, mean they need to skill up with you know 30 people, but they need to have enough internal knowledge. Um, I still suspect there probably isn't enough out there. Um, and even the people I've lost in the meantime haven't gone to jobs. I thought I would lose most people to S4 HANA jobs when they got that skill on their own CV. Now, interestingly, I haven't. They haven't, they haven't anyone that's left hasn't gone for that sort of role. Um, a, a couple, but not all of them. Um, but yeah, I can't emphasize enough making sure that you've got the right skill sets inside inside your own organization to, to be able to, to work with whether it be a partner or SAP or do it yourself as um, in the same way we did. Um, but I do think there will be a shortage. I think there's probably still a shortage now and I think there'll continue to be a shortage as we get nearer to the date um, when more and more people need to be across. Okay. Do, do you see anything like that from a global perspective, Oliver? Yeah, I mean, I mean, two things to add on that. The one thing what we are driving from the from the global side is also to more and more standardize these services, which we have done in the past already, like bringing the the product knowledge and the industry knowledge into best practices, leveraging set activate as a as a standard methodology, and driving it from there. So that's one element which we are driving. Scaling out goes typically via the ecosystem because, again, on the on the subservices side, we are pretty much limited, and there is no intention to really grow there from a services side. Here, we typically support with with expert support um, that goes via the ecosystem, and there we we see that this this has significantly changed. Like it was two or three years ago, the skill set is there. Um, now it's more about maybe. Um, there is still obviously some countries where it's not yet there, where it's growing over time. Uh, if you have, for example, a global rollout and you need to have dedicated expertise in a, in a, in a specific, uh, specific country, you might have a challenge there. And the same is true for dedicated um, industry specific knowledge. Um, but I'm really confident this will, this will also change over the next, let's say, 18 months. Um, last but not least, and you mentioned it uh, in, a, in a statement earlier, the, the change that we have now with every, everybody sitting here in these environments and doing these things 
online virtually, I think it's also an opportunity to more leverage. Um, I mean, first of all, we have more time because we don't need to travel from A to B or do the commute. Um, and all these things are now available online. I mean, uh, we talked about the, the movement page where you find all the collaterals. But also things like TechEd, which is now um, available, which we did, which was a virtual event, which is online, which is still available. And people can invest two, three hours, uh, maybe a week, and, and, and build up skills, which before, to be honest, they, they would have to travel somewhere for five days events. So I think it's an opportunity. And we see that that this is also um, yeah, taking getting more traction in the ecosystem that people are investing maybe time over the weekend or um, and, and yeah, upskilling themselves. Thank you. Quite interested in that on the upskilling Ray, Sorry. Yeah, I just want to add from a UK perspective. And um, so, so firstly, the last point that you mentioned, Oliver, I think is key. Um, in the past, um, you know, a lot of uh, customers were insistent as well on having people on site and certain skills on site. Uh, if the, the, the pandemic has shown us that when push comes to shove, we actually can do it. Absolutely. I, I would always say, especially from a change intimacy perspective, that nothing beats having that face value. But I think, you know, there's a lot that can be done more effectively and efficiently uh, remote. Um, and uh, what we find also in the UK as a result is a lot of new partner players that are coming into the UK that have a lot of skills and experience outside in other regions um, of the globe and also who have um, a lot of uh, you know deep and advanced uh, offshore capability um, so you know that gives us um, also a potential extra bandwidth um, you know within the UK the last thing that I would just say is that the path to SAP Esfahana is a journey and it doesn't have to be a treacherous journey. Um, and I th by that, I mean, I think every step of the way should be, uh, every customer should grab that as an opportunity of upskilling and enablement as you go through it. You know, um, and, and use that really early on as well. You know, to Dawn's point, look at where your skills gap uh, gaps are, what skills you are willing to invest in, what you will definitely go elsewhere for, and you know, use that time effectively. Okay, interesting. Yes, Dawn. It's it's a good point as well. The pandemic has changed things, and I think the recruitment pool is is changed. So whereas before we would only recruit in a in a area generally where someone could commute to, um, now that pool is could be if you want it to be the world, um, providing you know you can work within the hours or wh whatever it is. But the the pool and the skills um, availability is now you know much bigger because we've all become much happier to um, commit to not necessarily having people on site to raise point. You know. I've, I've been guilty of myself. Yeah, I want to see them. I want, I want them to be there. And actually, they don't need to be. You're exactly right. Yeah, interesting. So, certainly is. And there's a couple of points touched on there. One around that remote delivery as well. And uh, we, we have a podcast coming up later in the series uh, where, where we're talking about that, about not letting the pandemic impact your projects because they can be delivered successfully uh, remotely as, as well. And on on that kind of skills and uh, issue perhaps and, and around areas to circumvent, we've heard about online learning and it'd be remiss of me not to mention the user groups, uh, SAP Learning Hub, a uh, great offer that we have for our members. Uh, that will be coming up in, in March and April. Uh, but also, you know, that re remote delivery, the partners, the SAP services, the whole community that's out there is, is there anything else perhaps uh, that we've missed Trish or, or anything is there any other uh, areas that you feel customers can circumvent that issue um I think probably one of them would be um, our jam sites as well so our online jam sites where people can connect to other people um, so I think sometimes I think we are always looking for that face-to-face -face contact and actually how it comes about, um, whether it's through SAP, through events, um, or through our collaboration. We've got an area now where the um, 
other customers can actually recommend certain partners for elements of how they transform their own journey or any change. So you can actually go and find education as well as people that have already started that journey or use a specific partner that's actually has then that business backing. So it actually gives you more confidence um, in that relationship that you might be able to have. So I don't think that can be underestimated. No, that, that's great. So it's a very good point, that online collaboration platform where, you know, we have for our members to go and actually engage with each other in, in that virtual environment uh, that's available 24-7, so it's ideal. And, you know, I want to thank you. We, we're just coming uh, to the end now uh, of this episode. And just to close, I would just like to go around, quick fire round with each of you. Just w take one top tip from you on how can customers get help or any tip from you to help customers decide their best path to the future? So I'll start with you, Dawn, if I may. For me, I think it's having the right business case at the right, doing it at the right time for you as a business with the right resource internally, and then it's, it, it will be a success. Thank you. Oliver? Yeah, for me, it would be talk to other customers because I think that's where you get uh, the best view, the best picture, do the reality check. And that's why for me, the user groups are user groups are so essential because that's one of the platform where you can have that access, talk to other customers and get real life time experience. Thank you, Trish. Um, be very clear about what your requirements are and what your end to end process is. What are you trying to achieve? Because I think some people don't actually look at that at the start of the journey. And I think without that, you're on shaky ground. I quite like that, that outcome-based reality, if you like, what are you looking to achieve at the end? Yes, yes. definitely. And Ray? Uh, from, from me, use the move to SAP s Hana as an, a business growth opportunity. Don't look at it as a technical mandatory requirement from SAP because it's not there. That it is the future of technology that's all encompassing in what is essentially you know what we've actually had for the over 40 years. And bring along all of your key stakeholders, specifically your business stakeholders from the outset. Because very often decisions are made in isolation. And then you get to the point where you know you need to secure a business case or you need decisions made, and that can really you know make or break your success. Thank you very much. And thank you all for, for taking part and, and being here on this podcast. I really, really do appreciate it, and I'm sure our listeners do as well. And you know, we've heard lots of great advice there, and the support that's out there for customers from SAP, from the partner community, and from the user group. You know, so I would just implore all customers to use those avenues and really get as much knowledge as they can to really help start plan and discover if you like the journey and then move along to uh, project success so thank you very much and thank you for listening and for more information on UKI so please visit our website at www.sapusers.org and until the next time stay well stay positive and keep washing your hands <laughs>